Stop it. You're gonna cut yourself. Yeah! That's a pretty accurate response to your first claw protrusion. Pretty quickly, we're shown what has shaped Logan's personality. Hearing a man kill your father and then finding out the man who killed your father is actually your real father after killing him with your newly discovered bone claws might mess with your head a bit. And then to only have your sadistic older brother to turn to for family and tutelage could lead you down a dark path. One of the greatest transitions into possibly the best part of this entire movie. Our origin story gets its own origin setup. Say what you will about this movie, this Wars Through the Years montage is spectacular. It's a quick history lesson, further establishes a solid basis for Logan's personality, builds a bond between brothers while also showing us their slow drift apart over the years and Victor's slip into callousness. The blending between each war is done perfectly and most importantly, it's just super entertaining to watch. And I love the twisted tone the score takes as Victor begins to really lose it in Vietnam. Deadpool Beta Version 1.0. This reminds me of when George Miller was like, remember that gyro captain guy y'all liked in The Road Warrior? Yeah, he's in Beyond Thunderdome too, but he's not the same character. Oh, and now he's a bad guy. It's probably not as intimidating as having a gun or bone claws or the fingernails of a bag lady. It's not exactly breaking the fourth wall the way that Deadpool often does, but it's a little meta to be making fun of these mutant powers. Slight hints of the Deadpool we got in a different and much better movie. Sabretooth's claws make me uncomfortable. Not because I'm nervous he's going to slash out at me, but because I feel like they might get caught on something and rip off. I just don't like fingernails. If we were meant to fly, we'd grow wings. Nah, Angel is only ever in the last of the trilogy. So, maybe Logan? Let's get Don Cheadle. No, Jamie Foxx. What's Will Smith doing? No, guys, I've got it. Let's get a member of a hip-hop group that's never acted before. But I digress. He actually does pretty well for the most part. So, like, do background checks include checking on the gun buyer's ability to mid-air reload? Magazine capacity doesn't really matter when you can do that. We got a superhero landing and just a bunch of anti-stormtrooper aim. Great. I'm stuck in an elevator with five guys on a high-protein diet. PG-rated Deadpool beta version 1.0. Thank you, sir. You look really nice today. Compliments. I think this probably goes beyond quick reflexes, but whatever, it's still awesome. And bullet splitting is always a win. Okay. People are dead. Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool audition reel. You didn't have that mouth on you, Wade. Be the perfect soldier. Now that's like double foreshadowing. Mouthless Wade shadowing for this movie and retroactive joke shadowing in Deadpool's solo movie. Also false, as proven by his standalone movie where he broke all the R-rated records and fully embodies the Merc with a mouth. I didn't sign up for this. Contract negotiations with evil G-men can be tricky. Also attempting to save an innocent dude. Ultimately, this is an interesting character study about brothers with similar powers and how death, war, power, and immortality can shape you as a person and the choice of paths given to them. This is a movie I'd watch. Give me Wolverine in the Rockies, lumberjacking, chilling with his wife, and living in the sweet, sweet house he probably built with his bare hands. Bare claws. Bare claws. Hmm. Also, Hugh Jackman's workout routine. I couldn't decide whether to make a Hobbit joke or a Lost joke, so here's both. I don't think Not Penny's boat knows about second drive shaft, Victor. Leif Schreiber really kills it in this role. Pun intended, obviously, but he's actually really great. You're afraid of dying. How do you know? You've never tried it before. And Victor may seem a bit like a mindless goon just being bad to be bad, but I see it as furthering the character study of the ultimate case of PTSD. Living through multiple wars, slowly desensitizing over a century of fighting. His ultimate goal is to gain power and become Weapon 11, but a close second is continually overpowering Logan and making his life miserable. So he'll go to any lengths to accomplish that. <laughs> That's it. I'm calling it. There will never be a better Wolverine than Hugh Jackman. He might even be the best cast of any comic book character ever. The real Deadpool might be as good, but I feel bad for whoever has to fill his claw holsters after Logan. You might be thinking, come on, another whitewashed Native American character? But Lynn Collins is actually part Cherokee. I completely reject this. This totally flies in the face of every Canadian stereotype I've ever bought into. I choose to believe this guy is an American tourist pretending to be Canadian. But I will say nice stereotype dodge. Gotta love these little hints thrown into dialogue. Notice her phrasing choice? Female powers of persuasion, it's a gift. What you have is a gift. Return a gift. So Kayla is both the moon and the trickster. Seems like if Logan had been paying attention, he should have predicted her betrayal. And every night, he looks up in the sky and sees the moon and howls her name. Wait, did the writers get wolverines confused with wolves? Or are there any wolverine experts in my audience that can confirm they do howl? Hopefully we'll all learn something from this? You don't write? How else am I supposed to get your attention? Ironically, that's honesty. That's all this was about, Stryker getting Logan's attention. Cape flip! This is what's great about indestructible mutants. You can tackle them through doors, drop a pile of logs on them, bounce them off a semi, and just generally do cartoony things to them that would turn even the most fortified beings into jelly. 
Was that a bird? Must have been a bird. I'll just keep going. Logs don't deliver themselves. I swear on my son's life! Tricky, tricky, since we know from X2 that you gave, or will give your son Jason a lobotomy at some point in his life, swearing on his life doesn't carry much weight. You can't beat him, Logan, you know you can't. There's a lot going on not only physically, but psychologically as to why Logan can't beat Victor. They the should be fairly evenly matched as far as mutant abilities go, but Victor's lack of a moral compass and indifference towards human life gives him an edge over the somewhat morally grounded Logan. And Logan hasn't been fighting in years while Victor's been killing off mutants. Also, older brothers, am I right? Stryker, I just don't see the reason for adding a dog tag stamping machine in this facility. What could we possibly need it for? Four new ones. Oh, my bad. I'd say of all the things to fall into the brutal category, liquid hot metal being injected into your body and onto your skeleton fits the bill. A nice little detail to have the bones sliding out of the way to make room for his claws. Gives it a more realistic feel. I'm not saying Tom Hardy can't do it. I'm not saying Tom Hardy won't be a great Wolverine, but there will never be a better Wolverine than Hugh Jackman. There he is, the ricocheting skull Logan we all love. Yes, you can feel the power. Also, Gavin Hood took a note from Singer with the big X. Ma and Pa can have aged well. You got no clothes on. Astute observations. You know what happens to men who go looking for blood? What? They find it. That might be the best and most honest line in this whole thing, and he almost heeds the advice in the end. All right, that's a pretty great nod and tie into X1, and apparently this leather jacket sold really well for a while after this movie came out. Can't complain about any of Gavin Hood's transitions. Handbrake! Yep. Wolverine accepts the Mission Impossible theory of explosions. Though to be fair, it makes sense he could survive the blast. Not so much for Ethan Hunt. Also, this is awesome. Brutal. This kid is a great cast for a young James Marsden. And not too far off a similarly aged Ty Sheridan? Deadpool is right, this has gotten confusing. Did you just call me... Blob? But, like, that's your name? <laughs> See, kids, laser eyes wouldn't be all fun in games. I always wanted to tell you. <laughs> Spine grab! This solves that whole Jason Street getting paralyzed problem. Tim Riggin should have been quarterback. Also, eat your heart out, Chris Angel. You even know how to kill me. Exactly my point from earlier. No. He really doesn't, and that's called character depth. I'm not really, uh, sure what, um, I guess brand new adamantium turns you into a blender? And in reverse, a blacksmith. Hey, it makes you feel any better. Is this really gonna hurt? Well, yeah, it kinda does, actually. Honesty. Wolverine skipping. I mean, that's a pretty decent twist. Finding out that the motivation for almost everything you've done has been a lie. And I really like that he looks like he's about to be sick instead of going full rage monster. It's a more accurate response to this revelation. All in all, this was actually a pretty great plan from Stryker. Create a false need for revenge to get his DNA and test out the adamantium bonding, then remove his need for revenge by reversing the initial catalyst. You run the risk he's gonna cut all your heads off anyway, but based on what he knows about Logan, the odds were in his favor. Did I mention Hugh Jackman's workout routine as a win yet? Cause yeah, Hugh Jackman's workout routine. Ever the vigilante, Logan can't help himself when given the chance to save some kids. Deadpool 2.0. You know, as terrible as this interpretation of Deadpool is, comic book Deadpool does teleport using a teleporter, and he does have a healing factor. So they tried to put a different spin on his origin. I just can't believe there wasn't one person in the room that said, is anyone worried that we might piss off all the Deadpool fans? You know, the, the people we're trying to get to spend money on this thing? If they had just left his name as Weapon 11 and called him Wide Walson or Maid Milson in the beginning, it would have just been a nod and not the molestation, massacre, and mutilation of one of our favorite mutants. Also Ryan Reynolds slash Scott Adkins workout routine. The detail in this teleportation is amazing when you slow it down, as if he teleports from outside in. But also, cheaters never prosper. At least eventually. <laughs> Sabertooth to the rescue! Back to back! Call back to their warring days! Back to back! So, Deadpool is a shirtless embarrassment and abomination, but Weapon 11 is kind of awesome. And this fight is pretty awesome. It manages to be PG-13 brutal and the panning camera makes for fun visuals. I'll never defend this treatment of Deadpool, but hey, they tried by having his eyes dark into a similar shape as Deadpool's mask. Yep. Brain may heal, but his memories won't grow back. You know, that actually makes sense. Memories aren't physical brain matter that Wolverine can grow back. John Carter of Mars to the rescue. Love. And now we all feel a little better about Brian Cox being tied to the dam in X2. Walk into your feet bleed. And then keep walking. 
some brief satisfaction amongst all this devastation and sorrow. Yeah! They should pull a Lucas and superimpose James McAvoy's face over this scary plastic surgery gone wrong CGI. But for 2009, they get a slight pass, especially how small the budget must have been considering these. Following instructions. Shh. Nah, you're dead. Just go watch the real Deadpool, everyone. As far as origin stories for angry, violent, badass loners go, this one does a great job of giving Logan plenty of reasons to be the character we meet in X-Men, especially when you consider how little he trusts everyone. Even though he falls for Jean, so much of his time is spent trying to work alone and not make connections with anyone, even when Rogue is reaching out to him. And that makes sense after the events of this film, even if he doesn't consciously remember it all. Jackman's Wolverine truly deserved a standalone movie, even if they did miss a golden opportunity to show us the super dark, savage, PTSD maniac Wolverine could have been before his memory loss. And if not for the disgrace that was Deadpool, this movie may have been received better, although likely not by X-Men comic fans since they took far too many liberties with the source material. Still, we are given plenty of nods to the comics as well as previous films with different mutant cameos like the Emma Frostish mutant, Cyclops, possibly Quicksilver, and Xavier scarily making an appearance to tie into canon. Other than Hugh Jackman, Lee Schreiber is the standout in this film. He maintains a menacing tone throughout and really sells the psychopath immortal well. Ryan Reynolds' performance as Wade Wilson got him his own movie from only a few minutes of screen time, so that's all I really have to say about that. And even though I gave Will I Am a hard time, anyone who doesn't know him wouldn't point him out as a fish out of water actor. We've had serious, dark, and gritty comic book movies, we've had over the top, goofy, campy comic book movies. This movie wasn't sure what it wanted to be, and that's really its biggest problem. It leans more towards camp with some of the performances and overall tone, but then we also have a lot of super dark subject matter of pain, death, torture, and betrayal. I didn't hate this film the way so many did when I saw it in theaters. I left with sort of a meh plus feeling. After seeing it again, I have to say it's a really fun movie. Had this come out 30 to 35 years ago, it may have gone down as one of the best comic book movies ever. The entire movie has that 80s gratuitous action feel. Soft on plot, heavy on cliched explosions. Some real work went into the action set pieces, especially the amazing opening war montage. Which, by the way, I almost forgot, is the fastest way to becoming a disconnected psychopath. The fight choreography is totally entertaining, and to be honest, Jackman could make a thrilling Wolverine movie with just himself and sock puppets. So, there. It's crazy that this movie was hated so much that two separate films were made to erase it. Both Deadpool and Wolverine got different origins. The first time I made this video was before Deadpool came out. I pondered whether Wolverine would make a cameo, and he sorta did. I also recommended The Fountain and The Prestige if you needed a Jackman fix. And I stick to that. If you can't wait for Logan, go watch those two films. He weirdly also shines in Movie 43, but definitely don't watch that. Even I have to draw the line somewhere. You're, you're about to be killed by a Zamboni! You're gonna die! In five minutes! <laughs>